Hello everyone, welcome to Chessvisor, your wise choice to improve your chess. In today's video, I am going to show you a very interesting game played between Robert James Fisher and William G. Addison. So this was played in Palma de Macra 1970 Interzonal Tournament. So there are two, three uh, things, uh, uh, key things from this game we have to learn. So the first one is rapid development and another one is uh, get your king to safety as soon as possible and also how to attack the and castle to king these are the three key things which we are going to learn today so if you are watching the channel for the first time uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the future videos so here uh, fisher uh, as usual he started the game with e4 and uh, here uh, william williams uh, Ad william addison responded with uh, d5 so the scan even defense uh, uh, seeing this uh, move on the board uh, fisher was smiling so that means uh, he, I, I think uh, uh, Fisher meant that uh, Scandinavian defense is uh, inferior to e4. So he continued with e takes d5, queen takes d5. This is because of the main uh, reason that after knight c3, the queen is kicked back to the home square. So there are multiple main moves here, queen to a5, queen to d6, but queen to d8 is one of the popular choice. So he played queen to d8, and after that uh, Fisher gained space with a d4 knight f6 develops a piece and after that bishop to c4 so bishop to c4 and then uh, black played bishop f5 in this position black could have uh, gone bishop to g4 also uh, developing with the tempo and then uh, uh, maybe fisher uh, either uh, knight ge2 is possible or even f3 is possible so in uh, in this line one uh, tactical idea i want to show say for example if we play uh, f3 and then uh, these all the dark squares are uh, are become weak now and another idea is if you play knight f3 in this position and uh, if uh, black uh, without uh, any patience if you black black grabs the knight then bishop takes f3 queen takes f3 uh, queen takes d4 is already a blunder queen takes b7 is a winning move for white so this is a small uh, tactical or trappy line in this line so here uh, fisher played bishop c4 and he played bishop f5 so queen f3 uh, this is a multi-purpose move uh, it develops the queen early and also it comes with the tempo on the bishop which is not defended and also the b7 pawn is not defended so it's a basically a fork so after queen f3 he played queen c8 defending both of them and in case if you are wondering if black captures on c2 then we have uh, queen takes b7 and after knight bd7 after bishop f4 uh, white is clearly better so you could play rook b8 but then uh, queen takes a7 is coming so it is better to uh, it is better to uh, defend both the points so that is why black played queen c8 so after queen c8 uh, fisher continued with the bishop to g5 and now uh, he thought okay this is the time for uh, uh, for me to grab the pawn so he went bishop takes c2 and after that uh, fisher simply uh, put the rook on c1 to attack the bishop and the bishop went back to g6 so after that knight ge2 knight bd7 developing move and fisher castle here if you look at the uh, fisher's position uh, it clearly shows that he has completely developed his all the pieces uh, he has completed the development the rook has connected it's already in the semi-open file the bishops eyeing this uh, uh, juicy f7 square the knight sits on the natural square that this knight is okay but now uh, the this knight can go to the fourth rank to uh, knight f4 or g3 depending upon what black plays and the queen is wonderfully uh, placed so all in all uh, uh, it's a, a very good position for white just out of the opening but for the time being fisher is just one pawn down and now in this position black played e6 uh, to develop his dark square bishop so that he can castle right so here um, uh, fisher played bishop takes f6 and knight f4 is one of the main move because uh, we could sometimes sacrifice the knight or the bishop on e6 point to keep the king in the center but here Fisher immediately took the knight, so bishop takes f6 and after g takes f6. So in, in this position, if black uh, recaptures with the knight, then there is a problem with this move, that is d5. What's the problem? If uh, black takes the uh, pawn, then after knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. If you, uh, uh, I think the black king is still in the center and we have this beautiful battery thing going on. And the knight is coming to f4 or to c3 or g3 and the rook e1. So a uh, black king will not survive longer so that is why uh, he wants to keep the position closed so he played g takes f6 in uh, uh, many of the positions or the coming uh, uh, 
other if the game uh, continues then uh, he will try to close the position only but fisher will try to open the position as he completed the development he wants to attack the king so here he plays d5 the another opening move to uh, e5 so here he played e5 again closing the uh, file down so and here in this position fisher played bishop to b5 now this is the 13th move of the game in another 10 move uh, the game is going to be uh, over uh, in this position uh, black played bishop e7 simply develops the threat was very simple uh, fisher was spinning this knight as it was defending this pawn he has to defend further right so he played bishop e7 that's a developing move and uh, in this position uh, fisher played knight g3 so it's a wonderful post for knight which uh, which is going to be on uh, f5 but the problem is this bishop is there uh, anytime if we put the knight he he may capture it right so for that purpose uh, fisher will do something so that you are going to witness now so after this move uh, black played a6 so putting a question mark to the bishop and bishop comes to b3 now you may realize that why fisher plays d3 at first sight uh, you may not uh, uh, know because why you are want you want to exchange the bishop it's simply because i want that uh, light square to be in my control so who is the defender of this light square this is the uh, one piece who is defending there uh, the entire diagonal as i was mentioning this knight wants to go to f5 but now the bishop is guarding that that's why bishop d3 is a very important move in this position and after that william addison uh, played a queen to d8 in this position if you capture immediately like this after queen takes d3 uh, maybe you can try knight c5 gaining some time but after queen f3 the same knight uh, which i was mentioning that knight f5 is still going to come to that square that is not an uh, what do you say you cannot tolerate that knight which is on f5 okay so let's go back and uh, continue our game so here uh, after this he played queen d8 and in this position fisher played h4 now he forces the things because he wants to trap the bishop now or, i mean it's not a trap but he wants to force the exchange so h4 h5 so he stops it immediately and now he plays bishop f5 so after bishop f5 uh, he may uh, form the battery also sometimes so i don't know what uh, what's the plan so bishop f5 and now he played knight b6 after knight b6 fisher played knight c e4 uh, please note that still uh, the black king is in the center and now already as i was mentioning bishop, uh, fisher was down one pawn but now he offers another pawn so knight c e4 uh, offers another which is uh, that's also center pawn it's very very important right but he allows uh, addison to capture here so knight takes d5 and now he pins that knight with a rook f d1 uh, all the pieces are uh, working or coordinating well for fisher here so after rook f d1 he simply defends it with c6 but now comes knight c3 so after knight c3 he puts immense pressure on this knight so it it should be defended or the queen has to be um, uh, have to move around right so he played queen b6 and now he plays this amazing move that is rook takes d5 a sacrificial idea why it's very very important to do the exchange sacrifice uh, since it's a kind of closed position this knight will work in a uh, very good manner in a closed position right and this will this knight which is going to be on uh, d5 it will be hitting everything so here after knight takes d5 it's already a lost position for black i should say so here uh, he played queen uh, queen takes b2 uh, if you consider the uh, queen back to this old square that is d8 then rook to c7 uh, bishop f5 just over uh, just an example variation uh, so bishop uh, bishop takes f5 rook takes e7 check queen takes e7 and then knight takes e7 king takes e7 and finally knight takes f5 so this is a completely winning position for white so he played queen takes b2 and now the rook comes via another file that is rook to b1 and after queen takes a2 he keeps on grabbing all the pawns and he is already an exchange up and also uh, several pawns he has captured but after rook takes b7 the game goes no further because here addison resigns the game why he resigns uh, let me sh quickly show you one uh, a sample variation so here uh, in case because this is the one now it is attacked twice right and it cannot be different further so if you simply drop the bishop back like this then we can play bishop takes g6 first and after f takes g6 knight f6 check if this uh, knight is captured then we have uh, two options you can directly capture on the 
uh, f6 square or you can simply go for the mating net also so queen takes c6 check sorry queen c6 check king f8 and now queen takes f6 with check and after king e8 and we can uh, do the checkmate on e7 square uh, if you consider taking on f6 that is also going to end in the uh, mating net in two or three moves so if you enjoy this uh, review please give it a thumbs up in case if you are watching the channel for the first time and you have reached this uh, uh, this far and thank you so much for watching the uh, video till then and consider subscribing to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the future reviews so as usual this is chess wiser your wise choice to improve your chess